Hello everyone, welcome back to our videos. Today I'm going to show you how to create a VPN uh, IPsec tunnel connection from a remote site to your head office. That's uh, what is called a LAN to LAN or site to site VPN connection using uh, any of the ER605 or ER7206 VPN routers from Omata. Both of them can be configured using either the network controller or they can be configured as a standalone router. In this particular exercise, we're going to use one of these connected to a network controller and one of them configured as a standalone router. Okay, so let's understand first what we're going to do. First, we're going to create the responder, which is the router that is going to be answering to the initiator. Let's say is more or less like dialing and answering a phone. This one in particular, you can access the web graphical user interface as it is configured in a standalone way. Let's go to the VPN and check first that this one is a router that has critical tasks uh, already running. Uh, we can see and check here the tunnel list that we are running right now and it's a critical task as it is a point of sale. And right here we have an OpenVPN client connected already. Here we can check the OpenVPN tunnels that are active. Usually we have three. We have the, the L2TP connection. And today we're going to create a branch office connection through an IPsec tunnel. So it is very important that you understand that we are going to create first a very weak tunnel and then we are going to add some complexity to the connection so we can check if it is completely running, if we have all the parameters at hand and we can troubleshoot how to uh, increase that security. This one is our head office where we're going to create this particular uh, configuration. We're going to go to add uh, an IPsec tunnel. We're going to name it. Uh, it is important that you give a full description of the tunnel that you're going to create. We're going to check the mode as LAN to LAN. The remote gateway is going to be the IP address of the remote uh, computer or network. That means this branch office. Uh, remember that it can also be a FQDN. We're going to check right here the WAN, that is the port that is actually connected to the Internet. Remember that this router supports multiple WANs. And we're going to proceed to specify which one is the local subnet and which one the remote subnet, according to the information that we just saw in the graphic. We're also going to check a very simple pre-shared key. Remember that at first you may want to check everything very simple, very weak uh, passwords, uh, very in secure networks, let's say it that way, and then we're going to add complexity to it. That being said, we're going to set a pre-shared key of just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, of course, once again, you might not want to have this type of uh, passwords or pre-shared keys in scenarios where you're already at work and you have exposed WAN connections. You might want to be very careful to check the status to enabled, and then we're going to expand the advanced settings. Uh, let's go over here to phase one. Remember that it has two settings. The first one specifies how uh, encrypted and how secure the second phase is. As I said, we're going to check the IKE uh, version one. That means we're going to select a very weak uh, encryption proposal. And after communication is established, we're going to proceed to secure the tunnel. As we said, this one is the one that is going to play the responder mode. We're going to select the local ID to name also, the remote type ID is going to be name and we're going to select a name that is as descriptive as possible. Also, that it is not subject to any spelling errors. Then we're going to uncheck right here the dead peer detection and we're going to continue to the phase two settings. And we're also right here going to check one that is weak in terms of encryption and negotiation. We strongly recommend that you investigate a little bit about the Internet Key Exchange, the MD5, the DES, the DH1 Diffie-Hellman group, so you will secure your tunnel, once we're done with this one, to the highest level of security available for you. Right here, we just leave the defaults and we're going to click OK. At this moment, at this moment, as you can see right here, our um, responder is active and it is listening to connections. I'm going to open right here system log and we're going to leave it so we can see when the incoming connection is answered by the responder. Let's go now to our remote location and we're going to assume that you have the network controller installed in your remote location. This means that we are going to adopt the router and we are going to create the same uh, connection parameters for the initiator. So let's go uh, to the branch office and open the network controller. 
but not before checking again our scheme. Uh, we already configured this one, the head office, and we're gonna go now to the branch office and configure the router that is going like to make the call to the responder. So over here, we're gonna connect our router to our ISP or our WAN network. We proceed to connect the local area network cable to our computer running the network controller or connect it to the hardware controllers from TP-Link. When you are configuring the ER605 or the, or the 7206, if you select here the WAN setting overwrite, it means that if you have it disabled, all the settings that you had configured in the router will pass on to the controller. That is the only important consideration that you have to keep in mind when adopting routers in the Omada controller. So we're gonna go ahead and adopt this router a process that will be very fast as there are no configurations done right here in this network controller that will go onto the device. So that provisioning is gonna take just a few seconds. Before we go to settings to VPN connections, we check twice that the router is already connected in devices and we start our configuration that is gonna be provisioned into the router. Let's go then to the VPN and start our configuration for the initiator. Right here, we're gonna name our connection. And as the other one had, we select a name that is very descriptive. We select site-to-site -side VPN. And right here, we're gonna select manual IPsec. Remember that if you had both controllers connected to the network and to the cloud, they would appear over here and VPN, IPsec tunnel connection one to another one would be much, much easier. We're gonna do it manual so we can actually learn something. The remote gateway, the remote gateway is gonna be the IP address of the responder. In this case, it is a public IP address that is related to the WAN port of our remote router. The remote subnet, like we did in the first step at the remote location, as you can see right here in this graph, is gonna be the networks that are related to each one of the offices that we have right here. This is something very simple, but be careful just not to mistype any of the information that is very relevant uh, for the routing tables for each one of the routers. Right here, the pre-shared key, again, very simple. We strongly recommend you that once we're done creating this simple tunnel, you select a more complex pre-shared key. WAN, which is the only ISP that we have right here. And we're done with this first part. Let's go to advanced settings now and configure exactly the same things we configured in the responder. Let's go for the key exchange version one. Remember, I do not recommend using IKEE version one. This is just for testing purposes, guaranteeing that the tunnel is established. Once we're done with that, we're gonna proceed to increase the security of the tunnel as we've said many times. Right here, we're gonna create this one as an initiator. Uh, we come over here and change it to name. It is very similar as working in standalone mode for the router. We're gonna select the names exactly as we did in step number one. If we used uppercase, we're gonna write it in uppercase also right here. And we go to phase two. Uh, oh, I forgot right here. We're gonna uncheck the dead peer detection also as we did in the responder. Finally, for phase two, we select exactly the same proposal method that we used in the responder. MD5, DES, and then create. It is gonna take just a few seconds for the tunnel to be created in the router and for the tunnel to be established to the remote location. Uh, as you can see, the clock right here is 1259. Let's go simply to ping a remote address. In this case, it is gonna be a, a .2.221 and it is responding. This means that we are pinging a machine that is remotely located as if we're directly in our local area network. And as you can see right here, uh, the web graphical user interface of that uh, same equipment is responding. Another very important task that we can do when we create site-to-site uh, -site VPNs is browsing remote computers and exchanging information or files and even printers. You can see right here the log in the responder that phase one and phase two of the negotiation and the tunnel establishment was completed successfully. Now that everything has worked out, let's proceed to increase the security of our tunnel. So let's select 
a more complex encryption technique and set of protocols that will guarantee the security of the information that we are exchanging between networks. If you were having trouble establishing IPsec tunnels, this is the way to start and then you'll start increasing the security of your tunnel so you will know exactly when things may go wrong. As you can see right here, our IPsec connection update was completed successfully and the tunnel was secured in a successful way. One of the advantages of working in a side-to-side -side or land-to-land -land IPsec tunnel is that both networks are going to reach out to resources located in the other network. A little bit different to something you might find in OpenVPN client acting in the router that will let you access resources in the head office, but the head office will not be able to access resources located in the branch office. If you want to monitor the status of your VPN connection, you can go to the insight in the network controller that will let you have an insight of how your IPsec tunnel is working. Once again, this is exactly what we just did. We have used this router for several types of VPN connections for many months and it has worked flawlessly with no problem at all. We really appreciate you watching our videos. Um, if you like this video and its content help you with your project, your thumbs up will be greatly appreciated. And of course, subscribing to our channel is of great support to us. See you next time.